In the last video, we used properties of logarithms to take a single logarithm and expand it so that you just had the log of a particular value or variable. No powers in there because we brought the powers in front. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take expanded versions and we're going to condense them back into a single logarithm. For example, if I take 4 times log of a plus 9 times the log of b. So we're trying to go backwards, right? So instead of pulling the powers out in front, we're going to put the powers back up where they're supposed to be. So this coefficient will now become the power here. And the same thing for the 9. He becomes the power. So this becomes log of a to the fourth plus log of b to the ninth. So that's that, that third property of logarithms just kind of going backwards. Well, the first property of logarithms says that if there's a sum, we can do the uh, product of what's inside the logarithms and create a single log that way. So we can put these guys back together and say a to the fourth times b to the ninth. So we have a product inside a single logarithm. So imagine if you were to expand this. You would split this up to have the two separate logs, and then you would take these powers and bring them out front like we have right here. And so uh, that's it. You're not trying to solve anything. You're just trying to condense into a single logarithm. You're trying to simplify. All right, let's try this. If I do 3 times log base 5 of x minus 7 times log base 5 of z. In the last video, I talked to you about how any factor that was in the denominator would lead to a negative uh, coefficient when you expanded the logarithm. Well, now that I see a negative right here, that tells me that this guy is going to be in the denominator. This, this z factor is going to be in the denominator. So we can do a couple of steps here so you can see how this works out. First, you want to put those powers back inside. So that's log base 5 of x to the third minus log base 5 of z to the seventh. Now, we're going to try to condense these guys, and the only way that we can condense them is because these bases are the same. If this were base 5 and that's base 3, these guys couldn't go together as a single logarithm. Now, since I have subtraction, I have the difference of logs, this is going to lead to a quotient inside that logarithm. You're not doing log divided by log, you're doing log of a quotient, and there's a very distinct difference there. So x to the third is in the numerator and z to the seventh is in the denominator. So this is us writing this expression as a single logarithm. Again, another way to, to see this is that you could say this becomes log base 5 of x to the third. And you could say plus log base 5 of z to the negative 7th. You could just take the negative with it as it goes up into the power. And then when I put these guys together, you get a product of x to the 3rd and z to the negative 7th. But we all know that when you have a negative power, that negative power ends up in the denominator like that. So we get the same answer, right? It really just depends on how your brain works and how you want to uh, put that stuff together. So let's do one last example here. And then we're going to get extra old school. Well, that's going to be the next video. Uh, so let's do this. Negative 2 times the natural log of a plus 7 times the natural log of b minus 9 times the natural log of c. 
Well, all these guys are the exact same type of log. It's the natural log that we were talking about before. So this is going to be the natural log of, let's see what we have here. I have some positive coefficients and some negative coefficients, so that tells me that I will have a quotient inside. This negative two, you imagine this whole negative goes up here as the power. So that's gonna be a to the negative second, which means you'll have a squared in the denominator. Remember, those negative powers and these negative coefficients mean you're gonna have something in the denominator inside that logarithmic expression. But here, this is a positive seven. So you move that back up here, that's b to the seventh, it's a positive seven, so that guy ends up in the numerator, like this. Here you have another negative power, so that negative nine on the c is gonna force that c to be in the denominator, so c to the positive ninth. Another way of looking at this, is you can see, you know what, I'm gonna put this all together as a single expression and say a to the negative second, b to the seventh, just kind of doing multiplication, not even seeing that as subtraction, but seeing, seeing that as a plus negative nine, and then c to the negative ninth. But then you've got these two guys right here. You have a to the negative second, and c to the negative ninth. And so you don't want to leave negatives in your answer and so you kick both of those factors into the denominator like this. This is why I like exponents. There's so many different ways of getting to the same right answer. All right? So there you go. Now, in the next video, we're going to go old school. We're going to see how do they do certain logarithms when they didn't have calculators.